I'm Scott Russell, Extension Agent for Integrated Pest Management in Terry and Yoakum Counties. This is Andy Kramer, Extension Agent for Integrated Pest Management in Gaines County. And we want to spend some time today talking about mid-season diseases in your peanuts. We're about 90 days past planting. Peanuts have begun to lap the rows, the middles of the rows, so that we've got a full canopy, holds in the uh, humidity, increases our likelihood and chances of having more disease development. Also, our current weather pattern that we've had of much more uh, rainfall than typical or normal, more than we've had in several years anyway, has increased our incidence of disease. So we want to talk about some leaf spot, pod rot, and a couple other uh, fungal diseases that we see occurring in peanuts at this time of season. General principles in scouting for, insect, uh, for diseases in peanuts is like scouting for insect pests in peanuts as well. It's an intensive process where you want to cover several locations per field. Ideally, eight to ten locations, three row feet per location, and you're examining either the, the plant surface area, the soil interface with the plants, or as you go into pod rot and the subterranean diseases, the digging those plants and looking at the pods individually. So again, it's intensive, covering several areas, and three row feet per location, and then keep a record of how many infested plants you have per location. And if you've done as we mentioned in earlier videos and calculated the number of plants per row feet, you'll be able to calculate a percentage of infestation just based on the number of plants in that three row feet times the number of locations. First, I want to talk about leaf spot. At this time of year, we can have early leaf spot or late leaf spot. They are caused by two different fungi or microorganisms, but it's not as important to distinguish those two microorganisms because the same chemicals, products, control both early leaf spot and late leaf spot. Leaf spot is typically identified first noticeable by the bright yellow halos that will be surrounding the lesions and necrosis in the leaf. Then the uh, most distinguishing characteristic would be, be using your hand lens to examine the upper leaf surface and lower leaf surface for the fruiting bodies. And even with a 10x hand lens, one can find and see those spores and fruiting bodies on the surface of the leaf. Typically, early leaf spot fruits on the upper surface of the leaf versus late sp leaf spot fruiting on the bottom of the leaf surface. In your scouting, be sure that you're using random areas of the field, locations that are typical of the overall field condition, not locations that are particularly low lying and catch more water, nor areas that are higher and might run off, have more runoff and less water because you want an overall picture of the entire field, not just isolated snapshots of one location or the other. Leaf spot is an important pathogen because it will lead to defoliation of your peanut plants. This defoliation will result in a lack of pod fill, a reduction in the number of pods, and therefore a direct impact on your yield from that field. It will not directly affect or cause pod rot, but as again, as I mentioned, causing defoliation and therefore reduction in your yield, you want to treat it early, catch it early on by scouting and therefore treat early on. I'm gonna talk a little bit about a uh, pod rot. Two, uh, the common, uh, two common pod rots that we see here in West Texas is the Pythium pod rot and the Rhizoctonia pod rot. Um, again, as Scott mentioned earlier, you want to check three row feet at eight different locations. In this field, we see some Rhizoctonia pod rot. You can see it here. This will cause, uh, this causes damage to both the inner and the outer portions of the peanut, the kernel, and the, uh, and the pods, uh, which can greatly reduce yields. The only way to detect pod rot is to actually dig the plants up and inspect these pods. And what you'll look for is a discoloration, as you can see here, a black, blackish-brown discoloration. 
can be a small portion of the pod or it can actually uh, cover the, the entire pod. Rhizoctonia will be a, a darker discoloration. Pythium will be, uh, it'll have, it'll be more liquid. We have a couple other common diseases that might be infesting peanuts at this time on the high plains. The first one is Sclerotium rossuli, which is also known as white mold or southern blight. The second one would be Sclerotinia blight. In Sclerotium, the, or white mold, you're going to find a white matting of the mycelium, the white threading-like growth, and the sporulating or the fruiting bodies are spherical, tiny spheres, tiny balls of white to, and gradually turning darker color as they mature and get ready to eject or spread those spores. They'll be growing on the surface of the soil, on decaying plant matter from previous season, or actually infesting, moving into the peanut limbs and branch vines. Another fungus that we see this time of the year affecting peanut, peanuts is Sclerotinia blight. Characteristics of Sclerotinia will be a, the mycelia on the top of the ground at the base of the plant foliage. It's a white fibrous material. You'll also be able to lift up the foliage and see sclerotia, which they are similar to mouse droppings, little black uh, pellet type formations. If you detect this, this fungus at this time, there's still time to do something about it. But if you or your scout misses it at this time, the, the stages as it advances become greater and your yield, yield loss will become greater.